Tonight, another version of the Wonder Years Senior Citizens Division. So stay tuned. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, we lead, and we inspire. Last time we got together, I made the point of, you know, they had the... Uh, there's been two TV shows. There's the, the old one was where there, you know Winnie was the girlfriend. It was the little white boy. And now I've seen commercials. They have a, a, a black boy, the Wonder Years. So I thought that I would put together the Social Security version of the Wonder Years myself. Self, the things that I wonder about. And by the way, you know, when you stop wondering about stuff, when you lose that curiosity, you know what? You're merely existing, you're not living. Okay, so make sure that you live now. Last time we got together, we started talking about a few things. Let's, first thing I want to talk to you about in, under the heading of political correctness is, you know, in, in the football season, they always talk about, you know, oh, well, you know, they're going to have a big rest after, after this game because next week is the bye week. What does the gay community think of when they mention the bye week? All right. You know, people are very sensitive to this, you know, these times. Hey, football players, hey, you know what? Next week, your bye week. Keep it, don't forget. All right, another thing I noticed. Did you ever watch the old version of Superman? Now, you watch the old version, you know, Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen, Perry White, Don't Call Me Chief, that type of thing. Superman comes in, he always comes to the rescue, he flies into the room, and people always go, Superman! It's like, well, duh, who do you think it is flying into a room? Superman! Why do you have to announce it? I get it. I see him. There's not a whole lot of people wearing blue and red tights in my life. So when I see him, I kind of, in a cape, I, I suddenly recognize him, okay? Even though if he puts on a pair of glasses, I may not be able to actually know who the heck it is. Also, the Lone Ranger, <sighs> Clayton Moore, the, lone, the original Lone Ranger, he would often pull Tonto aside, they're trying to, you know, catch the crooks. And he would talk to Tonto with the Shakespearean English, you know, the very fancy words, four or five syllable words, and, and then at the end, Tonto would go, ah, me do. Okay, if you're going to be able to understand that, you've got to be able to say something more than, ah, me do. Right? And then the other thing is, I, never, I was never able to figure out why when the Lone Ranger would send Tonto and say, Kimosabi, go around the rocks and we'll get him from behind. Why didn't the other the bad guys try and come out from behind the rocks and get them from behind? Duh, don't know. Okay. Anyway, next thing. You know, on TV you see a lot about, you know, a lot of crime shows, criminals and so on. And, and when somebody's going, when they've been convicted three times, they're known as a three-time loser. And what happens when you're a three-time loser? Well, then you go to jail for life and there's no hope for parole, all right? At least that's the way it is on TV. I don't know if that's the way in real life, but that's the way it is on TV. Three-time loser, you're in jail. You're not they're throwing away the key. You're not getting out, big guy. You know what? If you stop and think about it, what separates the 95 percenters from the 5 percenters? The 95 percenters are three-time losers. They go, they try something, they fail three times or four times or whatever, and then they just give up, they have a life sentence. And the people that are in the 5% group just don't accept that, right? Think about that. So don't be a three-time loser. Next thing I want to talk about, recently we had the passing of uh, football great John Madden. Uh, the, and, and what made John, J John Madden so great was he was the sultan of simple. He, you know, he would say things like, you know, when they're punting the ball, you want to hear thunk, you know, but if you're a coach and you hear thunk, thunk, then you know the, the kick got blocked and you go, uh-oh. He would say something, you know, and he would go on the telestrator and, well, you know, this guy, and, and he would point it out and be the sultan of simple. That's what made him great. Think about it. When you can take something that appears complicated to the average Joe, and you can make it simple, you're doing some good stuff. 
Next thing, you know, I'm out, I'm out of touch. I'm a divorced guy. I'm, you know, here I am. I'm senior guy. And so I'm thinking about, you know, how do they do it now? Okay, well, I remember first they had the dating game. All right, the dating game. And, and, and then from there, and you know, that was just, you know, TV that was made up. Then you had computer dating, which was real. All right. And I, back in the day, I actually at one time did a computer date and it worked out pretty good, actually. All right. I did a computer date and it worked out pretty good. And then TV expanded to The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, of course. OK, you can't have one without the other. Come on. Politically correct us, my friend. And now they've gone to the they've made it exponential. Now they have marriage at first sight where two people do not meet until they walk up to the platform and say their I do's. I swear to you, this is a TV show. And I say to myself, as someone who has been a two-time loser under the heading of matrimony, that how can you possibly do that? All right? You know, there's no intimacy. You don't know the person. And, you know, oh, well, these are computer. I don't care if... You know, Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg sit down and pick two people out for me. These aren't the... Something you've got to do yourself. Marriage at first sight. Wow. Okay? I mean, it's just... It boggles the mind the directs people go. Eli, once again, I want to give you a warning. Okay? You have the serious girlfriend now, which I'm very glad I like her very much. She keeps you out of trouble, which is one great thing about her. Okay, plus she's very, very nice. I want to alert you to something that's going to happen. I've alerted you this before, but, you know, you were a puppy back then. Now it's going to be real. She's going to come up to you one day, and you're going to be next to a mirror, and she's going to look in the mirror, and she's going to say, Does this make me look fat? There is no good answer, except until now. So I'm giving you the good answer. Does this make me look fat? You can't say, yeah, it makes you look fat, and then they then forget about it. There's attitude, all right? And you, you say, no. You know what you say? Here's what you say. You say, sweetheart, that outfit really accentuates your curves. Rawr. Okay, and then growl. You can growl better than that. But I just want to give you some advice. All right, next thing I want to talk about is, you remember they talk, you know, when I was a kid and we'd sit down at the table and sometimes you get food and, you know, it's not your favorite. All right, I mean, I like steak, but I didn't like Brussels sprouts. You know, it's like, and, and so what do your parents say? They say, you're not getting up from here until you finish that. Or they would say, you know, there are children that are starving in India that need that could have that food okay and so the first time you say well send it to them and then when you get the backhander okay for being don't be fresh I mean, don't be fresh or you get the backhander all right why don't you send it to them then you get more logical and you say can I ask you a question if I eat these Brussels sprouts how does that help those kids in India how does it help them which leads me to saying, like, what are you bringing that up for, Eli's dad? Well, I'm thinking about the vaccine. There are people in India that would kill, not literally, but actually be killed to have that vaccine. Yet, we have it available to us, and not everybody's doing it. Well, the way I look at it, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't get a horse's ass to get vaccinated personal opinion. Don't write in and tell me I'm an idiot. Last thing I want to talk about is sayings that people have, combinations of words. All right. For example, in football, they always talk about goalposts. Well, in today's vernacular, couldn't a goalpost be something that you put on Facebook? Make that a goalpost. Put your goal, put it on Facebook, put it out there, make it real, get it active. Because a lot of times what people do with the media, the social media, is what I refer to as mechanical bull. All right? You remember John Travolta, urban cowboy, riding, you know, bull, put it on maximum. But really, 
If you want to talk about mechanical bull, take a look at the stuff on social media. There's a ton of mechanical bull. And take it from me because I know my real name is Nostra Bogus. And until we meet again next time, hey, don't ration the passion, fashion the passion. I'm Eli's dad.